Hi, I'm Graham, and welcome back to Man vs. Film. This is a top 10 list of movies that you can watch on Netflix UK for October 2017. So let's get straight into it with number 10. Circle. Held captive and faced with their imminent executions, 50 strangers are forced to choose the one person amongst them who deserves to live. It's a fairly low budget movie, but it's, it lives and dies on its premise, and I think the premise is really good here. Basically, 50 people wake up in a room, they find out they have the ability to vote on one person or a person to die, and that person is eliminated from this game. It doesn't really explain too much more than that, and it doesn't need to. You get the gist fairly quickly of what's happening, they're on a time scale, and it leads into all of these interesting debates and conversations about who deserves to live and who deserves to die. Almost, it's really well done. It really held my attention for something that's in the one location. I thought it was really terrific. Number nine, Operation Avalanche. In 1967, four undercover CIA agents were sent to NASA posing as documentary film crew. What they discovered led to one of the biggest conspiracies in the American history. Matt Johnson's debut film, The Dirties, was a terrific little indie movie that I really loved and I was looking forward to his next entry. This was an extremely low budget movie. It's done kind of full documentary style, mixed with a little bit of found footage and it is very interesting. Not the greatest movie but because it's budget constraints you can really see how this guy has used his storytelling and some interesting camera work to create a fairly decent movie. It's all about these guys at NASA and trying to fake the moon landings using Stanley Kubrick's set from 2001. It's really interesting, it's fun, it's got some nice moments, it's got some drawn out moments that aren't as great. It's got a fantastic car chase for a movie that had a budget of about 50,000 Canadian dollars. It's really well done. I like the actors. I like this guy. I think you should uh, check this one out. It's a little bit different and that's why I've put it on my list this month. Number eight is Bleep Like This. The inspirational story of world champion boxer Vinny Pagienza, who after a near fatal car crash, which left him not knowing if he'd ever walk again, made one of sport's most incredible comebacks. As it turns out, I'm a huge boxing movie fan. I don't really like the sport much, I don't really watch it, but give me a boxing movie and I just, I'm all in. Um, whether it's, it's Rocky or, or anything similar to that, like even Warrior, you know, that kind of sports movie where people are testing their physical prowess, I'm in on it. This movie, it has Miles Teller as the lead role and I think he does particularly well here um, in a character who has to go through a range of emotions in that car crash where he uh, is quite viciously thrown through the front of the car is, is unbelievably done, it's a top down angle and then you get to buy into this story of him coming back, the, how his family are dealing with it, his personal challenge as he tries to rise above it. I think it's a great movie, it's one of these underdogs coming back to the forefront. It's a story I didn't know anything about and yeah, it's really worth your time. Number seven is The Last Action Hero. With the help of a magic ticket, a young film fan is transported into the fictional world of his favourite action film character. It's got a film fan being drawn into movies. I'm a film fan, I've got a great admiration for this film. It was maligned when it came out. People just trashed this thing, but I think it was way ahead of the curve. It's more meta um, than anything has any right to be. It's directed by John McTiernan, starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, two people who made their living off of action movies, and here they're poking fun at themselves and the genre that they're in. But they have a huge budget, so they also, as well as poking fun at these action movies, have terrific action included in it. It's also really funny as well. It's one of these movies that you probably haven't checked out or you haven't thought about in a long while, and it is so worth your time. Last Action Hero, terrific movie. Number six is Straight Outta Compton. The group NWA emerges from the mean streets of Compton in Los Angeles in the mid-1980s and revolutionises hip-hop culture with music and tales about life in the hood. I'm not a great fan of biopic. I was a, a huge fan of NWA back in the day and I was mildly curious about this movie and it has no right to be as compelling, as interesting, as fun as it is. It gets you right into the life of these four characters, the struggles they go against, whether it be problems with the music company or racial problems or stereotypical problems with the police. It 
encompasses all of these, touches on all of the base points about these characters and just tells a really interesting story about interesting characters. Even if you're not a fan of the music, even if it's something that you don't really like much like biopics, give this one a shot because it is exciting, it is thrilling, it is fascinating. Number five is The Visit. Two siblings go to stay with grandparents they've never met, but the grandparents seem a little bit odd and the kids begin to investigate their elderly relatives. M. Night Shyamalan kind of stripped everything back, went to a low budget, started working with Blumhouse and created a movie that was rather fun and horrifying at the same time. But it's definitely not a horror comedy. It has moments of levity throughout it, but it is this weird tale of why are these old folk acting so weird? And why does it just seem to be at night that they go a little bit odd? The kids are really enjoyable. The kind of say, talking to the camera, fake found footage thing is, is a nice touch. And I really feel as if this has got M. Night Shyamalan back into that headspace that he was earlier on in his career. It's a small contained story that just works on the magic of the storytelling and it's not all relying on a twist at the end. It is just scary, weird, off-putting. I think it's really fun. Number four is Everest. The story of New Zealand's Robert Hall who together with Scott Fisher teamed up on a joint expedition to scale the Mount Everest just as a natural disaster happens. This is one of these movies that I was dragged to go and see. It didn't really spark any interest in me. It looked like a typical natural disaster movie. It's based on a true story. But what I got was something so much more. You're giving a group of characters to really buy into, to say, live their lives as they say, make their way towards Mount Everest. It, it allows you to say, get to know them, get to know their foibles, all these people, why they're climbing this mountain, before putting them in this arduous journey that I didn't really know too much about, and it is extremely arduous. And when the disaster hits, you're terrified for these people, and you know that they're not all going to survive, and you really buy into it. It's spectacle, it's thrilling, it's exciting, it's, it's fun to watch, and then terrifying. You're scared for the people that are on this uh, excursion. It's a great movie that looked as if it was going to be atypical of that kind of genre, but it rises above it. Number three is The Walk. In 1974, high wire artist Philippe Petit recruits a team of people to help him realise his dream to walk the immense void between the World Trade Centre Towers. Directed by Robert Zemeckis and starring Joseph Gordon Lovett. I heard awful things about this movie when it came out, reviews, uh, just panned it. Everybody gave it a miss. And I'm kind of sort of angry at myself that I missed out on this movie because it treats it like a heist movie. It's a visual spectacle. It is very fun and entertaining with a great performance by Joseph Gordon Lovett. And then that high wire walk at the end is terrifically fun as well. Yes, the documentary Man on Wire is better, but that's about teaching you the subject. This movie is about entertaining and it does it in abundance. Number two is The Bad Batch. A love story set in a community of cannibals in a dystopian future. In a desert wasteland in Texas, a muscled cannibal breaks an important rule. Do not play with your food. This is a hard one to tie down. It's a terrific movie starring Jason Momoa, uh, Suki Stackhouse, Keanu Reeves, Jim Carrey. It's about a prison population. It's just an open wasteland. You're thrown in there, you're part of the Bad Batch, and you're just forgotten about. You've got two factions, you've got comfort, where all the people who just want to live are, and then you've got the cannibals, they're all weightlifters, big bodybuilding people. It's very visual, it's exciting, it has some amazing cinematography in it, and it is a truly spectacle movie. It's one that I'm going to go back to again and again. It is a five-star film. Um, don't look into anything else about it, just go in and watch this thing and be marvelled. And number one for the month of October 2017 is Gerald's Game. While trying to spice up their marriage in a remote lake house, Jessie must fight to survive when her husband dies unexpectedly, leaving her handcuffed to their bed frame. This is based on a Stephen King novel. It's a novel that I've loved for years. I've read it a couple of times. I think it's terrifically pulpy and I was curious about how they were going to do it. And let's say Mike Flanagan has knocked it out the park. You have Bruce Greenwood as the, the husband and Carla Gugino as Jesse, the woman tied to the bed. And very early on, very quickly, they get to the situation. She is strapped to the bed. She can't move 
Her husband dies and she's stuck there. And the movie still has another 90 minutes to go. And it's interspersed with her husband talking to her in her imagination, a second version of her having conversations with herself about how to get out of this situation she's in. There is a dog there who is starting to devour her husband's corpse. She is lost, she knows nobody's going to be there for a few days and she is just trying to survive. It is thrilling, exciting, edge of the seat stuff that I absolutely loved. I think it's a terrific movie and one that you should definitely check out. So that's a top 10 for October 2017. I hope you find something there that you're going to enjoy or something you can check out. If you think I've missed something or I put, should have put something on my list, drop a note in the comment box below and I'll see if I can check it out and maybe put it on next month's list. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man vs Film.